My name is Sam Bakhnin, and I'm the author of Malignant Self-Love, Narcissism Revisited. In 2009, hard on the heels of the emerging economic and financial crisis, I wrote an article about China. The article was reprinted and replicated in numerous media around the world. It was a warning, which now is coming true. So here, unaltered, is the article I wrote and published in 2009. Mounting sovereign debt crisis in Europe and an anemic rebound in America's economy were more than offset by the emergence of Asia, and in particular China and India, as a global powerhouse. Yet the warning signs are there. China's economic so-called miracle has long been based on an artificial rate of exchange for its currency, the Yuan, the NMB, an unsustainable dollars of government largesse, and monetary quantitative easing, which led to the emergence of asset bubbles, mainly in real estate. Also, there is pernicious infl inflation to cope with, and frankly, heavily reducted statistics. So what's happening in China? Real wages have been declining in China for quite a few years now, as rural folk moved to bargaining cities. Bad loans proliferated, and consumption remained subdued, as saving rates reach malignant, self-defeating levels. In an effort to sanitize humongous export proceeds, China amassed trillions of dollars worth of foreign exchange reserves, mostly invested in American treasury bonds, thus creating a dangerous exposure to the vicissitudes of the increasingly more decrepit US dollar and to America's downgraded sovereign debt rating. Debt rating. I continued to write in 2009, the Chinese authorities' attempts to clamp down on rampant speculation and price gouging are too little and too late, not to say irrelevant. The economy will screech to a shuddering halt in the mother of all hard lendings. The Chinese house of cards and hall of mirrors will collapse ominously, ominously and swiftly. This will bring the entire global economic edifice into this array, with mounting imbalances and increased risk aversion among investors. The second phase of the global crisis will resemble closely the Great Depression, with massive write-offs in the values of equities, across the board crumbling of entire banking systems and mounting two-digit two -digit unemployment rates everywhere. How to reconcile this doomsday prognosis with China's uninterrupted string of decades of stellar, often two-digit, annual growth figures. By seeing China for what it is, the world's greatest ever Ponzi scheme. Behind the hype, the spin, the propaganda and outright confabulations, China's economic miracle is founded in its entirety on a simple premise, a breathtakingly audacious prestidigitation, a large, equal to two-fifths of GDP, and steadily soaring balance of payments, current account surplus, mainly with the United States, its addict partner in this dance macabre. This serves to disguise and directly underwrite the fitted outcomes of an all-pervasive state. These outcomes include a mountain range of rotting credits in the state-owned banks and local government, neglected sectors of the lopsided economy, and egregiously misallocated economic resources, mainly in the construction and retail sectors, and via huge stimulus packages. In many countries, government spending translates into GDP so-called growth. But China is a special case. Most of the seemingly inexorable mushrooming of its GDP had been faked this way in the years 2007-2008. Indeed, it is China's very dependence on a wary and wary and wary United States consumer which spells its doom when the American music stops. Once it does, China's investment-driven economy will revert to crippling overinvestment, overcapacity, hidden unemployment and underemployment. In one word, history's worst deflation, or worse yet, stagflation, will happen in China soon. We have seen it all before with Japan. The only difference being that Japan had a real and thriving private sector, 
whereas China does not. Its so-called private sector, albeit officially accounting for three-fourths of China's GDP, is mostly foreign-owned, export-oriented, or immersed in non-productive operations, read speculation, or unnecessary construction of ghost cities. Large swaths of China's economy, including and especially the mission-critical financial sector, are in the incompetent and venal hands of China's decidedly uncivil service, and are managed, rather mismanaged, by bumbling and provincial party apparatchiks. To this toxic brew, one should add a devastated environment, a dysfunctional judicial system, shoddy accounting practices, including by Western multinationals, stunted capital markets, an obliterated countryside, and dying agriculture, and a demographic time bomb. Owing to the one-child policy, China's population is aging faster than any other major countries. This is not to mention political risk in an age of Facebook-driven, tweeted revolutions. So I wrote this article in 2009. There's little I can and should change. No one is a godlike prophet. And of course I've made a few mistakes in it. But I think the overall thrust is pretty accurate. China is on the way down. Regrettably, it is bound to drag the rest of us with it.